Hey there, RPG fans and gaming aficionados. Welcome back to Joystick News, where we dissect, analyze, and sometimes overthink your favorite video games. Today, we're diving into the heart of Midgard to discuss something that's got all of us on the edge of our gaming chairs, the upcoming launch of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. With its predecessor, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, Leaving us with mixed feelings, we've compiled a list of 10 mistakes from the remake that we're praying won't make a comeback in Rebirth. So, let's not waste any more time and jump right in. Starting off with number 10, needlessly drawn out sections. Look, we all love a game that gives us our money's worth, but there's a fine line between content rich and just plain stretched. The remake had its moments where it felt like we were just running in circles. With Rebirth promising a more substantial experience, Here's hoping it's all killer, no filler. At number 9, we've got intermittent pacing. Epic beginnings followed by... Well, not much. The remake had its pacing issues, making the narrative feel like a roller coaster that occasionally forgot to thrill. The demo of Rebirth has us optimistic, but only time will tell if the full game maintains that momentum. Coming in at number 8, Health Gates on Bosses. Nothing yanks you out of the thrill of a boss fight like seeing your hard-earned stagger reset because the boss decided it's phase 2 time. It's a balancing act, and we're hoping Rebirth finds a more player-friendly approach. Number 7. Simplistic Quests We're all for helping a granny cross the street, but not when it's the tenth time doing something just as mundane. Remake's side quests often lacked depth. So fingers crossed Rebirth's promise of enriched side content and deeper narratives holds true. For number 6, limited character customization makes the list. Remake's system wasn't bad, but it left us wanting more. Rebirth's teasers about expanded customization have us hopeful for a richer RPG experience where we can truly make each character our own. And number 5, excessive loading screens. We've seen what next gen can do, and waiting isn't part of the fantasy. The seamless world map in Rebirth sounds like a dream, and we're here for it, as long as it doesn't mean squeezing through endless gaps to hide those pesky loads. Number 4 is overtly linear sections. Exploration is key in RPGs, and while Remake had its moments, we often found ourselves funneled down a single path. Rebirth's promise of an open world could be the remedy we've all been waiting for. At number 3, Level Layouts. We want puzzles that make us think, battles that challenge us, and dungeons that aren't just hallways. Rebirth, with its vast new world, has the potential to deliver just that. Number 2. Materia Management The new and improved Materia system looks promising, but what we really need is the ability to switch Materia loadouts on the fly. It's the little quality of life improvements that can make a big difference. And finally, number 1. Graphical Issues we all remember the infamous door texture. Rebirth's trailers have dazzled us, but we're keeping our eyes peeled for any blurriness or performance hiccups, especially in performance mode. So, there you have it the top 10 mistakes from Final Fantasy VII Remake that we're hoping won't find their way into Rebirth. As much as we critique, it's all coming from a place of love for the franchise and excitement for what's to come. But now, I want to hear from you. Which of these points do you feel most strongly about? Or is there something we missed? Drop your thoughts and theories in the comments below, and let's get the discussion going. If you enjoyed this deep dive and want to stay up to date with all things gaming, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on our latest content. Until next time, keep gaming, and may your adventures in Midgar be free of needless fetch quests and loading screens.